Okay, we're now going to try to build another unicycle. Um, I'm just going to do this to show you how to do it. Might be good, might not. I'm not going to build the same one that I did last time because it's boring for me to build the same thing twice. Just I'm going to try to make it even more compact than the last time. We will see. I'm just building the bottom of where the wheel will be attached now. Uh, I tried to use springs for the wheel the uh, on the other one. Uh, it doesn't actually really help much for the bouncing. So I guess there's something going wrong when I, um, when I mess with the springs. So the wheel is too wide and five tall. And uh, the middle point is three down. So we have to build two more, two more levels up just to hold the tire. And it has to be five wide internally. Uh, five long. Let's see. So I'm just going to extend it by one. And turn it around. Let's see. levels up and the wheel will fill this whole room so we can't put anything in there yet well probably not at all uh, I'm gonna try to put the front sensor here no, I can't do that okay just trick it like that you're building the two sides like this you have to make sure you have it connected in the in the middle all the time otherwise you're gonna split it in two and never get them back together which is kind of annoying especially when you've gotten really far in the build so I think we can actually split these off now and I think we can split these off as well let's see if it stays together yeah it does I'm building on this slope, by the way, so I can get on top of it quite easily. Okay, so now I'm gonna extend... How f long is this? Uh, it's... Seven. Okay, we probably need eight. Maybe nine. I think we're going for nine. And we can hide more stuff in here. just building the framework now to get everything inside. Is that correct? Well, close enough. frame and now we can hide uh, two axes inside here I think yeah and then the lengths yeah it's probably gonna work so now I'm putting in uh, the steering axis uh, should I do it the other way around no I'm putting the steering axis here And this is one of the, those spring things that makes uh, it turn without any other force like a jet engine or well, rocket engine or anything like that. So how it works is actually that it's pushing this part is pushing into here, compressing the spring 
and then making these phantom forces. So we have this. Okay, we should probably connect it to that outer ring so we can remove that little that one. And I think I'm going to do the up and down here. Uh, so this 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 axis will be the turning, which will be controlled by the steering wheel. And now I'm putting in the axis for tilting it side to side in the front and back. So let's see how to do it in on opposite sides. Uh, we we need two for well the steering axis could be only one because the steering will turn the hinge both ways, but one of those control units will only turn uh, turn it one way way depending depending on one input. So that that's why we need to. Could be much more compact if we hadn't need didn't need that. It'd be nice to be able to have two inputs on one hinge. Probably coming in future versions. So as you can see, we we have room here for two of the three axes, and the third one I think we can stuff on the side. I think actually this one will be more compact than the last one I built, which is nice. Yeah, we can stick it here. So put one here, like that. This side, this will probably be a really long video. So, if you're not interested in, in the building, then pro should probably leave. Uh, let's see here. Can we remove anything here so we can get room for? Nope. Probably put it in here. Let's put one here. So this will be for the side one. better. It doesn't have any function. So now we have all the four control units needed to control uh, the tilting and the steering wheel will handle the third one. So we have all three axes. To get We're going to need uh, to connect the seat, and it needs something to connect to, and to get it centered where I want to. Want to. Oh, I actually have to put some extra stuff in before I remove it. Let's see. Can we put it there? And the engine will have room in the back. Maybe we should do it like that instead. I think that's how we we're going to do it, so we can get the. engine here. Nope, that won't work. Okay. Well, we'll find some room for the engine somewhere. again because the wheel again needs space. 
So now we have all three axes and we can probably put in our wheel now. Which is the large one. Could probably me make it more compact by using the small wheel, but it looks much more funny with the larger wheel. Like that. And we have all the axes. Uh, and I did some maths. Um, the sensors will register things, stuff that is 10 blocks away from it and uh, it would look stupid having it 10 steps up because the wheel up to here is 3, 4, 5 with this level. So with some angles and stuff, um, in a right angle triangle uh, we get 9.9 .9 if the sides are 7, which means that we can put the sensors at a 45 degree angle out from the vehicle to get really close to the 10 block distance that the sensor can read. So that's why I put them on a 45 degree angle. It would actually work better if I put it at 10 blocks up, well 11 blocks up because it needs 10 blocks down to the ground, but it doesn't look very good so I remove that. So let's put in an engine. would want it in the middle. Could probably put the sensor on the side. I think that should work. It might actually act a bit strange with the sensor on this side, but it don't matter. And then we need something to put the front sensor on. Probably make it a bit cool. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should do it. Then we need one of those. Maybe we should make this look a bit better. I don't know how. I'm just gonna put it in here and let's see what happens. Something like that. These are just to hold the sensors. Uh, I'm probably going to move the engine one to the side so I can put the sensor more central uh, on the center back part. Let's see, then we can probably put one of those there. Yeah, that one, need one there. So put one here. Then we need the sensors, which can point downwards, doesn't really matter. We're going to control that, anyways. There we have most of the parts. Then we need a controller for to hold to change the direction of the sensors, which we can do well, wherever. Try to not put it close to anything else. Don't know where that should be. Put it in there, like that maybe. Should work. So then, then that's gonna control that hinge, that hinge, that hinge, and that hinge. We don't actually need an activation button for it because oh, it's only gonna do one direction anyways. 
So ju I'm just going to put all these to 45. I might have to change it up a bit because if it's unstable, it doesn't really work that well. So I just have to fix it basically. And that way. That way. That one is correct. And that one is correct. Let's see what happens. Yeah, all the sensors are pointing 45 degrees outwards, I think. Yes. Now comes the annoying part, finding out which spring torque thingy to connect what to. Let's see. So, if that one controls that box, that box should control that hinge. Go that way. That one should control that box. That box. Oh, I already messed up. How oh, nice. That's not one of those. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna do. I think we're gonna do the back one. That one is the side direction and. It's going to go upwards, which is stupid. Nope, I'm going to disconnect that and use the other one. So it forces itself downwards into the frame and not up into air. So, where are you, my friend? There, and we're going to make it so that it goes downwards. It just makes it simpler to have everything the same way when you're gonna adjust stuff because this gets confusing really fast. That one is controlled by that one, and it's gonna control this side. Nope, it's not. It's going to control the other side. Sorry, this is confusing. Uh, I'm sorry if this is confusing because, well, it's confusing to me. Don't really know how to do this in a proper controlled manner. Let's see. That's forward. No, that's that one. That's forward. That should be connected to that. That should be connected to that one. So it leans backwards when this sensor triggers. That's all this. Hope this works. And that one leans backwards. Ah, of course. I have to turn one of these around. They're both working the same way, which really doesn't help us at all. This one can lean the whole thing forwards by pushing up into the frame and making a force that way. But then this one is going to be connected to the back one and it's going the right way. That one is connected, it's connected to that one. And we have this free one which is connected to that one. That one should be connected to that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. The engine can be connected there. And we should now have two blue ones left. Down there. Nope. Down there. And down there. And we might actually have a working machine now. Let's see. Yeah. 
Oops. Um, when we're doing this, sometimes the engine doesn't work at first. Oops, there's something wrong. That hinge is not doing what it's supposed to. It should be connected to... What have I done now? Oh my god. That's connected to everything. Why is it... Oh. I'm not gonna cut this out because you should know how much work it is to actually get this stuff to work. And why are you connected? Yeah, of course. It was correct. I'm just messing up here. One, two, three. Four. That one's outwards, that one's outwards. That one's outwards. And they should all be 45 again. That's it, I think. That one's forcing that way. That's one forcing that way. Downwards. That one up. That one is forcing itself up into the frame. Yeah. Then we're gonna put a 15 degree on this. Doesn't really need more because. Unstable? Hey, it works. Hyperactive than the other one, probably because it's lighter, and I've probably done something better with this one than the other one. At least it works. We should go, let's see, straight up probably, so makes it easier to have this button so that you can uh, 
change stuff when it and it messes up. So it's probably not gonna be perfect the first time. However you do this. This one it's not perfect. It's working, but it's not perfect. sensors are going straight up which is probably preferable to going crazy everywhere now I'm making it possible to control that one from the steering position let's see what can we do to make this better try to change all the angles for the sensors let's try to put them to 60 see if that helps probably should take that one back one step pressing the one button ah much better and now we have the wheel problem which makes it so that it doesn't work all the time and there we have quite a stable one this one doesn't lean. Mm. Oh, I'm not going to show that now. It's basically just using two of the steering wheels on the side to change uh, the angles for the side, side sensors. So they point the one points more upwards and on the one point points more downwards. Then we can turn it off and it parks itself. There we go. That was a long video.